Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We now have the the legendary, the historic Judge Joe Gillery, right? And Mr. Gillery, the reason why I've asked you to come on over here on the uh, PA Political Revolution podcast is because we want to kind of let you take the floor and kind of provide some of the things that you're trying to do to help the people. Now, I know as being a judge, you really can't go in and, into a lot of individual things. So that's why I kind of want to let you open the floor and and kind of go in and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself first and then kind of, you know, for people that's been living under a rock and let us know some of the things that you're doing to help the actual people, sir. Well, David, you know, I made a promise to the people that I would stand in for the people and make sure that uh, we deliver fair and equitable treatment uh, under the law. And I've uh, held that uh, since I've taken office on January 3rd. Um, what I've noticed uh, since then is uh, an enormous amount of evictions that I'm faced with having to make those decisions. And uh, so... <clears throat> It, the evictions that uh, that we're hearing um, are predominantly uh, low income to no income families. <coughs> Excuse me, um, and predominantly female. Mm -hmm. So, what we're looking at are are female uh, parents. Uh, excuse me, David. I just. <laughs> Yes, sir. No problem. Take your time. Take your time. Take your time. And just for everybody to know, we are with the legendary Judge Joe Guillory. He is over here to bring us some information because, um, just like he said, during his campaign, he promised to try to help out the people. Are you back, sir? Are you ready? I don't know. Yeah, I'm back. I just got one of the more ticklers down there. Right, right. Um, so... <clears throat> The cases that we're seeing, again, as I reiterate, are affecting our family unit. And, of course, you know, we, we understand that economics is the root to our problem. So right. so just to start off this thing, uh, we just talk about economics just for a second. Yes, um, we have to provide uh, employment uh, for, right. for our families, uh, especially for our, for our young men, our young fathers, so that they can help the young mothers in, the, in these situations. Um, so what I've done, and we'll get into more detail, what I've done is I've reached out to several entities, one being Workforce Solution, uh, who can provide us a full service. They have a gamut of things that are available to the families here in Port Arthur, not just Port Arthur, Southeast, Southeast Texas. Uh, and they're willing to work with with the family. All we have to do is get the families to sign up. And uh, so what I've what I've made a uh, commitment and uh, drew the line at is that I was going to help every family that comes to by offering them an opportunity to seek additional help. Help maybe they wouldn't normally get. Maybe they didn't know where it was located. Maybe no one ever really told them all the different services that are available to them at no charge. Uh, in, in, in discovering some of the opportunities for our, our, our families, um, we found that we can uh, divert some of our uh, evictions by putting a plan in place for the family. Again, I'm stressing that if we want to see change in our community, it has to be about the family. So we had to have a holistic uh, viewpoint about the family and right. what the family looks like and what does it consist of. And, you know, in this lifetime, we know it takes a, a two household head yeah. to fully function. And it covers a gamut of things from uh, truancy issues that we're having, right? Yes, uh, disparate issues that we're having in the school district. So all these things are directly related to economics. So, mm -hmm. and we know when we go to work, things get better. It gets better in the household. It gets better in our personal life. We, we develop a personal level of confidence that we are actually achieving things based on the work that we put in to get to that level. Now, the families that are coming in, 
And I had one family. I mean, it was it was really heart wrenching when when you think about right. a single mother, five children, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the system has failed. Now I'm gonna speak to it this way. There may be many out there would would disagree with me, but I believe that the system is designed to provide a crutch for our people. Right. And it doesn't really help because it provides a temporary help. Then there's no plan in place when that help expires, just like it has. Right. So right. predominantly the families that we're, we're seeing, they were receiving help and that help expired. And there's no, um, uh, until recently, I just found out, um, yeah, there's nothing to help them transition. So they're faced with eviction. Right now, the law says I have to do uh, certain things uh, based on the law, but you know, it can't get around that one. Yes, sir. Right? I, I, can't, I can't make a decision and say, Well, look, we're not going to evict you, then you're going to go back there and you know, no, can't do that. Right, uh, but what I can do is uh, do what I've done so far is I brought services to my courtroom, I have them sitting in my courtroom, right? So once I hear cases, I'm, I let them know. If they want help, they can simply just go across the hall and meet with these group of people uh, from the Workforce Solution um, uh, Services, and I believe that that will help change their life. Now, it may not help everybody, right. but it will help somebody that's not being helped now. They want and help. the key thing is, yeah, if you you gotta want it, then that's that's another that's a whole nother story for another day but right. if you want to if you want life to change if you want your life to be different then you have to do something that you've never done before and that seems to be a little uncomfortable especially when you have to go out and get information you know to, to, to reach out because so many times doors are closed on us right you know you're reaching out for help but maybe you're not asking the right questions well i'm eliminating all of that for you by just bringing you in lining you up with with, uh, with one of the representatives, and they go through the process, gather your information, and they're going to stay in contact with you, and they're going to help you along the way. Whatever your issues are, say, for instance, there's a shortage of EMS drivers. Right. Here's a, here's a perfect opportunity to get a great job serving the community, uh, rendering aid to those that need help. Here's an opportunity for you to give back to the community just by applying yourself uh, and signing up for the program. Right. The, the Workforce Solution will provide an educational training program for you. You would uh, go to Lamar University, uh, Port Arthur, and the Workforce Solution is going to pay for it. Right. And then when you get out, you will be qualified to go directly work for Arcadian or any other EMS operation wherever you choose to go. So that's the opportunity that nobody knows about. You don't right. you never heard nobody say anything about yeah, right. that opportunity. That's right? Another problem. There's yes. a truck driving. That's a truck driving opportunity as well. That's one of the one of the uh, fastest growing industry in America right now with the greatest shortage. So here's another opportunity for you to make good money, take care of your family. Right? And make an honest living. And that's what we want to do because what happens when we get a job? Talk about just think about what happens. Not only does the confidence go yes, up, yes. the family the family unit comes back together. Mm -hmm. The children now have mom and daddy in the house, right? Mm -hmm. yes, They're seeing mom and daddy getting up going to work. So now we're creating a different experience for the child. Yes, sir. Right? Yep. So now that child's gonna have a a belly full when they get to school. They're going to be prepared. Somebody's going to be at home with them when they get home from school to make sure they're there to help them with their homework, right? right yes, so sir. there's a lot of things that will, will modify and correct itself simply by providing resources to uh, the citizens here in Port Arthur. And, and let me go ahead and let me go ahead and kind of interject in on that. And one and one another big issue that seems to be remedied by economics that a lot of people seem to forget about is crime, right? The biggest indicators of crime is economics. Um, 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 high work, you know, high people working, you know, lower the crime. 
um, higher unemployment, then the higher the crime. Go ahead on. I just want to kind of jump, throw that in there real quick. And, and, you, and you're absolutely right. Uh, so many things can can cure itself, right, from the inside out, simply by giving someone an opportunity. Now, here it is. You have to be prepared to go and get that job. Yes. That's what the Workforce Solution will do. They will help you develop your resume at no charge, mm. right? They will give you uh, uh, instructions on how to interview. They will, uh, they will give you traveling allowance. They will provide you with clothing if, if necessary. Uh, there's so many great things that, are, that, that exist that simply is not shared with the people that need it the most. So I've done the research. I asked those questions. You know, I talked to a, a lot of our, um, um, you know, important people in Port Arthur and got some perspective. And, you know, they directed me here. They directed me there. Uh, but what I found that I believe is going to help us the most is to try to get the family back on track. Now, May 11th, there's going to be a, a very large job fair. Okay, so my goal is, May 11th, my goal is to, di to direct as many as will allow me to direct them to the Workforce Solutions so they can start the process and prepare for that opportunity that exists on May 11th. So, so, so everybody is, has to at least make a step toward uh, changing, right? right? I'm gonna do my part. They're gonna do their part. Workforce Solutions go their part, and when everybody shows up, it's gonna be magnificent because they, you may have a good job, but there's a better job available to you, and you can go and learn how you can get that better job. Right. Uh, you know, welding. Lamar Lamar University has a, a welding program. So, if, you know, you want to become a baller, make a pipe fitter, uh, or, or whatever. And it doesn't even matter if you have a felony. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Good, good. So, so, so they're going to tell you all about that. Good, good. And that's also important too. And, and a lot of people. Um, unfortunate too, right? They get discouraged whenever they've made a mistake and they've, you know, paid their debts to society, right? And just end up having to have that jacket on their back, right? You know, a lot of things been happening uh three, five, seven, ten, twenty years ago that unfortunately through the, you know the uh, the government they didn't have to happen to have a felony on their record. And so it kinda unfortunately kind of, you know, limits a lot of things that they can do, you know, from what I hear like with housing and, and a lot of jobs. So I'm glad to hear that you have a workforce that's that's open to people that have made mistakes. And to tell you the truth, this is and tell you the truth, it's so crazy. But this is for another show. You would think that a person that be in jail, you would need to give them more job opportunities versus less, right? So you know that that's a different conversation for another um, for another podcast, right? But yeah, I just want to put it in there. That, that's so helpful that a lot of people, so they won't have the high recid uh, recidivism rate, right, going back and doing the crime because when they get out of jail, they can't find jobs. I'm not talking about minimum wage jobs where you can't live off of and telling somebody, hey, you know, you have a felony, you need to be glad you got this minimum wage job at a fast food. Nah, people need actual livable wage job, and there's also – in in including you know people that have have a, a felony on their record. Go ahead, sir. So when we look at what the jobs will do for the people, it does a lot of things. Okay, so you want to get on track, you can pay your rent now. You can start building. You start come back together as a family. You and your significant y'all start building right before right. you know it. You become a homeowner. So the process, so the process is available. Legacy provides a lot of uh, uh, great information, great strategies that will help you get your credit straight. But you can't think about those things until you get a job. Economics, yes, sir. So we got to 
we got to put things in perspective and then put a plan. That's what I'm talking about, putting a plan together. Uh, just start the basics and then you just work that plan and then make sure you come back and you re reassess what it is that you're trying to do. And then you take that next step. You go back to them and say, look, I'm ready for the next level. And then whatever that looks like, you know, that opportunity is going to exist, right? So what does it look like for the city of Port Arthur if, if the citizens are now gainfully employed? And those that get these great jobs at, at, uh, at the petrochemical plants that we have, rooftops start popping up. Now is the best time to buy in Port Arthur. Now is the best time to, to build, to raise a family, to, to strengthen the community, to create the village atmosphere again that we used to have when I was a kid. Where well, you know your neighbors are, are two or three blocks down, four or five blocks down, where you know, you know them, right? So now mm -hmm. you're going to start frequently uh, uh, seeing them at different places, the grocery store, you'll see them at church. Well, we don't have that right now because there are so many vacant lots in Port Arthur. So when I say a holistic perspective, I'm looking at the whole picture. And it all starts with providing information for our citizens. Now, shifting from that, moving into the evictions, moving into uh, cases and stuff like that. Right. If you receive a notification to appear in court, the best thing you can do is show up. I was just about to get to you that, don't, yes, sir. You don't know if you're going to win or if you're going to lose. But if you come prepared, that means if you're going to if you are come, bring documentations to support your position. Right. Bring doc. No, don't 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 show up with a, with a sob story because you know of course if it's not in black and white, I, I can't use it. Right. But you provide documentation to support your position and let and let the evidence show for it speaks for itself. Then, then we're gonna we're gonna uh, judge accordingly. Uh, the right, worst right. thing that 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 tenants can do in a, an eviction case is not show up. Right. You know. So so for instance, I had twenty cases the other day. Ten showed up. Ten ten wow. received uh, access to help. The other ten automatically lost by default. So why take a chance of losing all the way around? Right. 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 Absolutely. You know, I had I had one I had one uh, uh, landlord. They had a program already in place, right? Where they they all all the tenant had to do was agree to move out, and they forgave all eighteen months back rent. Wow, that's great. That's great. That's great. And so 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 the partnership that I'm having uh, is spreading. The apartment complexes are now. Uh, very, 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 get, you know, they're getting real serious about, you know, helping the tenants. So it's not a, a one-sided thing. The partnership is there. They want to partner with the tenants, right? They want they want to do all that they can do. I had one landlord, he said he wants to take his community centers and utilize it in ways that's going to help the tenants. So uh, I'm going to bring uh, my partners from the Workforce Solution, and I'm going to have them partner with those apartment complexes and whatever they're able to work out, they're going to work out. So they may be able to go to those apartment complexes and bring the services directly to those that don't even have transportation. They'll go and set up a seminar and just invite the residents to come down, uh, gather the information. Those that want to, want to partake of it will, those that won't, won't. But at least there's something different in the air now. There's help. People are speaking about changing Port Arthur. Right. Changing Port Arthur is not moving uh, buildings from downtown Port Arthur and mm. relocating somewhere else. That's a waste of time and right, money. Right, we need to right. put our we need to put our energy into the people. Yes, yes. Because when the people do better, the city will do better. And if anybody's talking about anything else, they're not talking about helping nobody but and, themselves. And it has to be about the people. And I'm glad. And I'm glad to hear you saying that because I was going to ask you. What was what was the um, the feeling from the landlords? Because previously you had a different type of a uh, uh, style of you know a uh, uh, style of management going on and whatnot. And since that, you know, in my opinion, you're a, a person that's a little bit more for the for the citizens and trying to help and trying to bridge things together. So 
That's great. I, I, I'm glad you kind of explained that you've been getting more help from the uh, landlords, and it seems like they're kind of coming together with you on trying to help and trying to help bring the citizens together to make a, a, a better city. Now that's kind of now that's now I'm just going to hit a side issue for a minute. That's kind of what I've been talking about, right? When we have elected officials and leaders respect themselves more and respect the citizens more, that commands everybody else, outsiders, to respect the citizens a lot better. See, this has to be more than just, you know, Judge Joe Guillory. We have to get this from everybody because the only way they will be treated better by not just landlords, by uh, the gas station people that charge us outrageous prices for gas in town versus out town to developers, to the plethora of businesses around here, right? Once we start treating ourselves better, then other people on the outside would treat us better. Go ahead, sir. I didn't mean to go ahead on the, on the tangent. <laughs> yeah, you, you have a tendency to do that. But but what we're looking at now, um, say for our, our young kids, there's a program, an internship program that's sponsored by the Workforce Solution uh, that they will uh, pay uh, high school students and I want to say uh, college, those that, and, and it extends to the one year after you graduate from college, you can still be part of the internship program, uh, which will allow you an opportunity for six months, 20 hours a week, $15 an hour. That's a start to get you in the door uh, in the particular field. So if you are, if you are in HVAC and you are at Memorial High School right now, uh, you simply get on a list with them uh, they will try to find a way to place you with a air conditioning company or maybe a contractor that's working on uh, uh, air conditioning systems and heating systems uh, in, the, in the refinery. So you get an opportunity to get mentored on the job training the whole night. And then after six months, depending on how well you do, you could end up with a full time job. They could offer you a job. Right. right. So, so, so we have to try to to utilize these services and benefits instead of waiting for the handout. Now, I'm anti-handout because it hurts us. It hurts the community uh, because people have too much time on their hands. Right. They have a tendency to that their focus is not where, where it should be and it's, it's not on the family. And then, <clears throat> and then they panic in the last minute because they need assistance. So what I want to do is I want to reach them now and say, hey, Let's 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 forget about yesterday. That's over. Let's plan on what we're going to do today so that we can have a tomorrow. It all depends on what we do today. The commitment you make today changes what happens tomorrow. So if you if you want tomorrow to be different than it was yesterday, you got to do something different today. And that means you're going to have to step up, get yourself uh, trained. We want we want to eliminate all the conversation that everybody wants to have about Port Arthur. Uh, there's no uh, eligible workers here. That's a bunch of malarkey. Oh, yeah, we bad. have a bunch of, if you start looking at all the brilliant minds that have left Port off and have a return because there's nothing here for them, right? Right, absolutely. So we can't say, we can't say that we're, we don't have uh, a qualified workforce. We have to go to them and, and show interest in them. And then, of course, with, with programs like this, it will instill some hope in the family, hope that, you know what, I can turn my situation around. Yeah, I may have a few knots, you know, a few, few, few hickeys on my forehead, but that's okay, right? I'm going to learn from my mistake. I'm going to make sure I can do the things I need to do today so I don't experience the same things that I did yesterday. So those are the things that I'm trying to focus on. And when I talk to the, to the, to the uh, uh, citizens in, in court, I'm giving them the same love I'm talking to you about right now. And everything I'm doing is out of love for the city of Port Arthur, for the citizens of Port Arthur, because I think that it is important. I think that is, is important. So when we start um, uh, looking at other programs to help the, 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 help the family come back together, then we had to start analyzing what are the other needs? That's where it comes in and gather the information simply talking to them, asking them, what do you need? If, if, if there was anything that you need, what is it that you need? And then, then they can uh, identify those needs and then we can put a plan together for them to accomplish what it is that they want to accomplish in their life. 
So when you come into court, come prepared, uh, believing that something as good is going to happen, that you're not going to be penalized uh, or taken advantage of or mistreated or treated unfairly, but an opportunity could exist for you just simply by showing up. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I do appreciate that. And I know your time is precious and I appreciate everything you've contributed. And hey, that's all the questions I have for you. If you want to give a closing statement, I would appreciate it. Dave, I just appreciate the opportunity. You know, I enjoy talking to you. You know, we debate about a lot of things, but the one thing yes, that sir. I know we have in common is love of this city. And we want to see this city prosper. Uh, this city could be everything that it wants to be. Uh, we just have to commit ourselves to doing what's right for the people. And if it doesn't benefit the people, then we should simply stay away from from those uh, uh, conversations. It has to be about uh, the people. You know, so you know, there's gonna be a lot of folks that's gonna have a lot of propaganda that they're gonna get out. He said, "Well, just ask the question: How does it benefit the people?" And if they can't answer that, then you should just slide that to the side and go on with that right there, because <laughs> obviously somebody puts you up to having that conversation uh, because it doesn't help the people. Uh, and that's what I'm all about. I want to make sure that the citizens of Port Arthur know if they need anything, just call with Judge Gillard. Because he's going to investigate. He's going to find a way to provide you with whatever it is that you need. I may not have all the answers. And I'll tell you, I don't have all the answers. That's why it's important about having the relationships that I have and continue to develop those relationships to help the people. That's when you get in a position like that, that's what should be most important. You get relationships that help the people and not help yourself. It's always has to be about the people day, always. So uh, uh, looking forward to uh, getting to work in the morning, get, getting hard at it. We've had a great uh, two and a half, almost three months. We've made uh, a lot of improvement in the office. Uh, we've adopted a lot of things. We got a uh, uh, new computer system in that we're, that we're working, that we're working on. And uh, the staff is doing a tremendous job. Uh, we Good. brought on another uh, another staff member. So we are definitely excited about what we're doing. Great, great. I'm glad to hear that. And I do appreciate it, sir. And thank you for your time. All right, sir. Thank you for calling. Yes, sir. All right.